Hello and welcome to another Geometry Guided Notes video. Today we'll be starting Chapter 11, Similarity. Now, a funny thing happened on the way to electronic uh, textbook. 11.1 .1 doesn't exist. We're just going to pretend that never happened. Uh, but instead, and actually more importantly, we have the Using Your Algebra Skills uh, Proportion and Reasoning section. And I really want to utilize this kind of in lieu of an official 11.1. .1. I watch as I scroll through here, we get to the problems, and it just jumps uh, straight to 11.2. No idea what happened, but that's okay. 11.1 uh, wasn't that great anyway. This should be a review from algebra. Ideally, you've worked with proportions uh, and ratios before, but in case you haven't, quickly run through here. Uh, some of the problems are from this section in your homework tonight. Two key words, ratio and proportion. What is a ratio? Ratio is any comparison between two quantities, uh, specifically using the division, although you will often see it written as A to B or A colon B, that still reads the same, A to B. Right? And this is, you say, oh, it's a ratio of three to two. Right? For every two things this guy has, this one has three of them. Okay? Uh, gear ratio is a very common example right? when you're dealing with cars and engineering and such. And we're going to stick with the fraction form most often. Right? Now, you can also write these numbers because they are fractions. They can also be translated into decimals. Right? We all know that 1 to 2 is the same as 0 0.5, and that's great except the 0 0.5, right? remember it has a decimal, that's really representing uh, 5 tenths, right? So you reduce that fraction to get back to the 1 half. It doesn't show the comparison there. It doesn't represent uh, both numbers, especially if instead we had, say, 3 to 2, 3 halves, 1.5, while it is the same quantity, it loses a little bit of that information, the representation of the comparison between two things. And throughout this entire chapter, we're going to be always comparing two things. So stick with the fraction. Fractions are your friends. I know you don't believe me yet, but they really are. They're so much better and more useful and usually make things easier than decimals. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. Fractions are, in fact, easier than decimals when used properly. All right. So that's a ratio. One comparison between two numbers. A proportion. A proportion now is a statement of equality between two ratios. So ratio was two numbers. Proportion is now two ratios. So you have two and two, and you need four numbers together. Okay. Here's an example over here. Reducing the fraction. 6 over 18, right here, equals 1 third there. That statement written out as such is a proportion. We can say that the relationship, oh, there's that word again, between 1 and 3 is the same as the relationship between 6 and 18, right? And that if I take the top number, multiply by 3, I get the bottom number. Same over here. Take the top number, multiply by 3. I get the bottom number. So it's a multiplication division relationship between the two, and it's the same relationship on both sides. That's what makes it a proportion. Uh, now, before going on, I want to talk a little bit about language. The rest of this section will go through uh, some of the math and, and working out uh, problems and, and answering questions using these, just like you would any other algebraic uh, equation there. But I want to talk about language because people a lot, of, a lot of times mess this up when they say something is proportional. Make sure I spell it. Proportional to. What does that actually mean? It means that multiple measures 
are in the same ratio. You have to have multiple measures. And I'll give you an example here. Uh, let's say I wanted to make a Batman action figure uh, to go on, on my shelf over there, right? If I want to make a Batman action figure, I cannot simply say, ah, Batman is six feet high, I will make the action figure six inches, and the action figure will be proportional to Batman. That is not true. Height alone is not the case. What if, and I'm going to draw a, a goofy little picture here, uh, stay with me. Let's use black for Batman, right? Let's say we had real Batman. Right, was that tall, and then I wanted to make an action figure that was the same height, but I make an action figure like this, and it's it's Fat Man, the action figure. Is that truly proportional to Batman? No, because we only compared the heights. That was one ratio. You didn't create a proportion. You have to make sure that you get, and I'm gonna use a magic copy paste here. There's another copy of Batman, and we're just gonna scale it down. Notice both the height and the width changes. Right? So we have the height changes to about a half-ish. I didn't quite uh, make it exact. And the width Right, also shrank by the same amount. That, now we can say the height and width, the action figure is proportional to the real deal because you have multiple measurements going on. A single measurement is not the case. You cannot say Johnny's height is proportional to Billy. That doesn't make any sense. You could say Johnny's measurements, height and width, are girth or foot size, I, I don't know, whatever you want to include there, right, is proportional to. But even that, you're comparing one thing, you're trying to say Johnny is proportional to Billy. It would be understood that what you mean is multiple measurements for their comparison of height to width and Billy's height to width is the same ratio. All right, so that's, that's proportional to, just so we don't confuse the language here. Right. Uh, to borrow their example there with uh, Dan and Emma, their heights versus their photograph heights. Right. We can't just compare heights of two people. We're comparing the heights of two people and the heights of two people in a picture. So we have four numbers to deal with. You always got to have more information going on to say something is proportional to something else. All right. Moving on. Run through that real quick. Um, it should be a review. If not, Google is your friend, but there's a few examples. Try a couple of these exercises down there. Not that bad. You're, here's an equation. Solve for a variable. Use all of your standard algebra tools there. All right. What is new for geometry is starts in section 11.2 with similar triangles. Now we're going to take that proportion and those ratios and we're going to apply them to shapes, right? We can start with a triangle. Let me try to draw a nice looking one here. Okay. And let's say we have a, another triangle, but we want to make it bigger, right? This will be probably the most common example uh, throughout this. We'll be talking about scale models, right? Like my action figure example, right? If you want to design uh, a new I don't know, say you're going to build a, another garage, right, expansion or something, uh, or, or a shed in your backyard. And you're like, okay, well, how big does it be? It's a tall, length, width, height. I don't know. Do you just grab a bunch of lumber and start building? No, you're going to start and sketch it out. Make a, make a drawing. Make a model. Maybe you'll get little craft foam and cut it out in pieces, or you'll, or you'll go build it in Minecraft. I don't know. Some way to make a model first so you kind of get a feel for how – the height compares to the width. Oh, is this right? Do I really want it square? Maybe I should make it longer, right? Keep the width, but make it longer, taller. Something like that. Get an idea of how those uh, measurements compare to each other. 
But then when you go to make the real thing, obviously it's going to be a lot bigger, right? So, how can we compare triangles? How do we know two triangles are, in fact, similar if we're not using uh, cheaty cut and paste techniques here? Well, let's start by looking at their angles. Here's an example of two triangles. They both have the same 48 degree angle. Are they similar? Now, what does similar mean? Shoot, we didn't define that, did we? Well, we better go back, make sure we understand uh, what it means for two triangles to be similar, right? Okay, I don't think that was defined in this section. So, similar means they are the same shape. I think we did have this way back when, chapter one somewhere. Same shape, but different size. Okay? Same shape. You can get a little more technical with that. And we'll be dealing with that as we go on. But for now, trust your instincts. Look at those two things. Do those two triangles look like the same triangles to you at all? No, clearly not. One is like way long and extendy, right? And the other one's kind of short and compact, right? If we were to, let's say, cut this one off right there, yeah, then maybe we've got some similar triangles. But it's got all this extra nonsense here that ABC didn't have definitely not congruent and also not similar right they're not created the same way that say these two blue ones that i drew are all right so one angle not enough just because they have the matching angle that wasn't enough to do it but what if we had two matching angles can you use aa alcoholics anonymous i mean angle angle as a similarity shortcut if you can match the two angle measurements is it enough to say the triangles are similar well think about what you know about a triangle um, you can get down into the whole you know constructing a triangle and doing all that but that's not important right now answer this question if you make triangle with an angle of d and an angle of E, and you know those angles. Do you also know, um, actually, what angle C? I think uh, they switched the order on me here, right? A, B, and C, because that's one triangle, triangle A, B, C. You know angle A, and you know angle B. Do you also know angle C? Or at least, can you find it? pretty automatically. At this point, yeah, you can, right? Triangle sum, they all add up to 180. So if the second triangle, angle D matches angle A, angle E matches angle B, wouldn't the, the power of subtraction suggest to you that F automatically has to match angle C as well, right? That would be right, answering that question in step two. What will be true about angle C and angle F? They ought to also have to be congruent because triangle sum you know the third angle, which means any ratio you make of those sides is also going to be proportional, right? The ratios will be equal or, or similar, right? They will be proportional, okay? The same ratio because we know as the angles go in a triangle, the sides also follow. A small angle is across from a small side. A big angle is across from a big side, right? So yes, it should make sense that two angles is enough to say that the triangle is congruent. So let's fill in our conjecture here. If two angles, let me get a little bit bigger pen here. It shows up. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then what happens? The triangles are similar okay and do we have a fancy symbol for similar uh turns out yes we do and it's going to be a little confusing one straight line and one squiggle above it that is our symbol for similar do not confuse that with congruent which was equals with the squiggle right congruent gets that extra line because it's extra good 
as far as matching things. Congruent is the best match possible. It gets the most lines. Similar, uh, it's pretty close, but not quite as good. We use fewer lines on it. Okay. So, there you have the symbol for similar. One straight line, one squiggle. Okay. The triangles are similar if you can match two angles. All right, let's keep going. How about other things? What about sides? Angles are great. What if I have side measurements? Well, here's an example of one that doesn't work. We've got two triangles here. The sides aren't the same. That's okay. We're not looking for congruent. We're looking for similar. So we want to know is, let me use the, the laser pointer here, right? Is this triangle twice as big as this triangle? Is it scaled up proportionally? Is it similar? Is it the same thing but made bigger? Right? Is this the action figure version of the real deal? Right? Or the scale model? We can see here the sides all match up. 54 over 108. So we're taking the hypotenuse of this one versus hypotenuse of this one. Divide the two, we get a half. 48 over 96. So that comparison of sides. Also a half. So far, so good. But does it actually look the same but bigger? No. No, it doesn't. We can kind of tell right here, this, this angle looks almost, almost a right angle. It might be. We can't be uh, certain without a little bit uh, more work, but it looks pretty close. How about this one? This would be the corresponding angle, right? Across from, across from the hypotenuse right there. It doesn't look 90 degrees at all anymore. It's definitely obtuse at this point something went wrong. This was not enough to say the triangles are similar. It changed things. It started bending this out here, right? If you built your little scale model to size here, and you said, oh, I'm just going to double these two sides, and it'll turn out great. Well, now all of a sudden, your thing is crooked. No, we're not just uh, focusing on the fact that one of them is turned down on the side. That's just so it fits on the page better, right? It wouldn't be standing up straight right? You would try to build this and erect it and it would, it would be crooked, right? You don't want that, okay? So that's not good enough. How about three sides? Side, side, side. Can that, oh, I'm sorry, that's a weird noise. Can that finally be enough to say that the triangles are similar? Well, let's, let's think about this critically here. If the book is going to give us a little orange box that says C92 Side, 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 similarity, conjecture. Do you think it's going to be wrong? Is it, I mean, the book, this book doesn't always give you the answers right away. It kind of makes you work for it. But it will not steer you wrong. It will not give you the wrong information, okay? So my uh, power of deduction here suggests to me that, uh, yeah, the book says there is a thing called SSS similarity conjecture. So I'm betting SSS works as a similarity conjecture. And I think you can believe me. If we take all three sides and we made them bigger, right? That was the problem here. Up here, the problem wasn't that these two sides are wrong. It's that we tried to shove this side too close. If we redrew this, okay, out here a little ways until that is above there and we get this third side, if we allow this to be a little bit longer, to also be double in length, just like the other ones were, then we will be able to match our triangle. And now it looks much more like a bigger version of the one on the left. So absolutely, side, 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 totally works. If the three sides of one triangle are proportional to the three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are similar or we can use our symbol there similar boom all right Ooh, what's this similarity plays an important role in the design of cars trucks airplanes small scale drawings hey that's what i was talking about right scale models uh, always try things small um and with cheaper materials <laughs> before you go big and just like construct a giant bajillion dollar rocket and then find out oh shoot it doesn't fit together all right that would suck Okay, side, side, side. Angle, angle, angle. We figured that one out a long time ago with the congruence that if we just match the angles, 
we can grow and shrink it and it stays the same. So we've got that one in our back pocket. Angle, side angle, uh, side angle, angle. Anytime you have two angles, it, it always works. Those always works. Uh, what about the two sides with the included angle or with an unincluded angle? Will that allow us to make them similar? Uh, well, once again, spoiler alert, the fact that they give us a orange box here on the page with the title SAS Similarity Conjecture suggests that yes, SAS should work. I'm going to draw you a real quick picture here. I think automatically proves absolutely, boom, done, it works. Here's a side. Here's another side. Here is the included angle between those sides. So the angle is the same. But the sides, how long they are, depends on where I put this line. Look at that. Right? If I tell you that these lines are parallel, okay, then you can be confident that this side stretches out to be this side by the same factor that this side stretches out to be that side. Right? If I say one, it, uh, okay, it's not quite double. Um, three halves as as big, I don't know, five five eighths as big, something like that. It, it's a five to eight ratio, something, right? But it's the same ratio on both of those sides. That's the important thing. Okay, so if you kind of think about this as a projection, right? A a shadow being cast. Here is, uh, my my hand, right? Here is the the light streaming out, and then here is the shadow being formed, a little rabbit shadow on the wall, right? That's exactly what's going on here. Side angle, side similarity is projecting. It is shadow hand puppets at work. So absolutely those two triangles are proportional, they are similar. The two sides of one triangle are proportional to the two sides of another triangle, and and, 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 critical piece, the included angle, or I guess uh, angles, because we're referring to one from both triangles, they don't have to be on top of each other, the included angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar. Okay? The included angle has to be congruent. And that looks like uh, just three bars there. I apologize. That squiggle needs to be squugglier. There we go. Included angle congruent, then the triangles are similar. Okay, what if the angle is not included? Let's just cover that real quick. Final note here. SSA did not work for congruence. We explained why but the best way to remember that it's the odd man out is that if you put it backwards, it spells bad words, and we don't say bad words in math class, and we certainly don't write them down um, on our papers. But what about similarity? Can we get away with it now? Turns out, mm, no. Look at this diagram. Here we have uh, two sides, x and y, and here we have 2x and 2y. And here is our angle, right? So it's not between the two sides. It stands apart. And it looks like, hey, totally, these two triangles look like the same shape. One looks bigger than the other, but exactly the, the arranged the same. It should it it should work, right? Isn't that isn't that proportional? Aren't those those two triangles similar? Yes, they are. But on the right, we've created another triangle that meets the same criteria. It still has this angle, it still has 2x and 2y. What we did is we took this line PR and we kept going. Right? We just expand that ray out and it turns out this length 2y from here crosses in two planes. Um, and I wish I had a way to draw a, a compass. But basically, if you were to take a, a compass, and this is where uh, we miss out a little bit without doing the constructions. Right? Imagine this is the center of my circle, and it has a radius of 2y. 
which means this circle. Uh, oh, that that was awful. A little bit better. I I kind of made it sloppy at, at the bottom because I ran to the edge of the screen. But I think you get the idea. Okay, this circle has a radius of two y, which means anywhere from this point to there is two y. Out here is two y. Out to there is two y. And notice what we've created here is an intersection. Okay, right there where the circle hits this ray coming from line P. Because all this angle does is specify the direction. We did not say anything about how long this side has to be. We only said this side and this side, right? The 2x and the 2y. That's the only distance we've established. So this could be any length we want. Could go here and we can draw it out to here. In which case we get the bigger triangle. The one that's obviously much bigger. It encompasses way more area. It just looks completely different, absolutely wrong, not similar at all. Side, side, angle still doesn't work. There will be no writing of bad words in your math homework. Sorry. All right, and from that we get to the exercises. So now it's just practice. Here's some triangles. You can either, from the measurements given, determine whether they are in fact similar or not, or being told or giving enough information about their similarity, work out what is the ratio, what is the proportion between some of the sides to determine what the other sides are going to be, right? This is exactly what you would do if you had a scale model. You would measure, say, okay, my scale model is going to be, you know, half as wide and half as tall, and then, oh, that means, uh, Right, back to my, my Batman action figure. If I make a scale model action figure of it, a six foot tall Batman is now six inches high, I gotta figure out, oh, well how big around is his uh, utility belt gonna be, right? That would be like that third missing piece of information. Um, but here we're doing much simpler, just stick with the triangles. All right, see what you can do. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask them here, email, Google Classroom, or uh, find me during the live Q&As in the Discord server. All right, that's going to be all for this section. Thank you very much for watching. So long, farewell, enjoy the rest of your day.